I'm about to spend $5,000 in the next 300 seconds buying the most satisfying tech on the entire internet. And then we're gonna test it. So this machine can hold your pen and write for you with perfect accuracy. Yeah. A paint sprayer, but one that apparently gives a perfect coat of paint every single time. I'm getting tingles just thinking about using this. What are you? This is very elaborate. The description says it flows upwards against gravity. This I have to see. I remember fidget spinners were a huge thing a few years ago. I wonder what a 2022 fidget spinner looks like. Wow, multi-dimensional? Get one of those. We have animated spinners now. This one's got so many moving parts. I just want it in my hands right now. Why is this one like $50? Okay, it's luminous. It's got listed here as one of the perks. Fidgeting can burn more calories throughout the day because you're moving more. Bit of a stretch if you ask me, but my curiosity is peaked. Someone's made kind of like a fidget spinner within a fidget spinner. That is a true 21st century product. Um, who made this and why? I've had an idea. Satisfying magnetic gadgets. It's always cool to see just how many products are out there. A levitating plant. Okay, I mean, the levitation is cool. It's more the fact that of all things that you could be levitating, you picked a plant. There's also just a levitating platform that we could put anything on. You're kidding me right now. This company has built a clock that uses a levitating orb as its hand. Oh, it's $800. Mm, 800 for a clock. <laughs> okay, screw it. Let's try some satisfying kitchen gadgets. I mean, this will be fantastic for my health transformation. Yes, yes, that's what I need. An apple corer that can get you perfect shaped slices every single time. A corn scraper. Okay, we need to get some more of these fruit peely thingies. Banana slicer. My body is ready. <laughs> yeah, boy. Okay, this isn't cheap, but I'm almost just visualizing this idea of spinning this wheel and getting perfectly cut vegetable slices coming out the other side. I think we have to get it. All right, I think we've got our kitchen gadgets covered. Let's try garden bedroom gadgets. Ooh. Hmm. I did not think that one through. <laughs> so if you have a designer product of your own, then this machine, the Formbox, it has the capacity to be able to duplicate it. I can literally remember featuring this product in a video back when the only thing that existed was just a trailer of it. But now it is real and we can buy it and test it. Automatic Zen Garden Sandball. Automatic is just how I like my Zen. It kind of looks like one of those things you could literally watch for hours, waiting for it to finish the pattern it's on. That's just giving me an idea. I genuinely think the most satisfying thing I've ever experienced in my entire life is the DVD logo hitting the corner of the screen. Oh, can we buy that? DVD logo hits corner shopping? You can buy a t-shirt with it on. It's not quite the same. Okay, I'll figure out how to recreate that satisfaction by the time we get to the unboxing section of this video. Mark my words. There's a 3D printer that can print chocolate in whatever shape you want. Where has this been my whole life? On a similar note, I've actually been drinking a lot more shakes recently with the whole trying to be healthy thing. Well, instead of needing to shake your drink, this thing uses a vortex inside of it to mix it. I think it'd be rude not to buy that. Hand towels that are actually tiny little tablets until they make contact with water. Yeah, I don't quite know how I got here. Right, I've never been so excited for the products to just be here right now. It's been two months and I am ready to be satisfied. I think I bought a bit too much tech. <laughs> so let's go from the cheapest satisfying gadgets to the most expensive to find out how much it actually costs to get that thrill. Starting with our kitchen gadgets. So this is our corn thresher, apple divider, and our banana slicer. Okay, fruit me. It's corn. Beautiful little corn we've got here. You know what would be quite funny as well is if you get like a cinematic shot of the corn and I'm like, what a beautiful specimen. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> it's so perfectly formed. That was incredible. That's a seven out of 10. This might be the corniest video we've ever made. Let's get this banana slice. It's about the least satisfying way to open a banana. Is fruit peeling an ASMR category? Right. Oh my God. That's what it's gonna do to the banana. Throw the guillotine, are you ready? Here we go. Oh, these are perfect slices, wow. Easy eight here. <laughs> you can't use that. Right, this might be the greatest Apple product of all time. Oh, I'd say that was probably more palpitation inducing than satisfying, but it did work. <laughs> to be fair, that is the quickest I've ever sliced an apple. I'll give this one a six. So these are a highly cost-effective way to get your fix. But I've heard that kinetic sand can do us one better. So this is kind of like moist feeling sand that never dries out. 
That was a great peel. They've really nailed the unboxing experience. Okay, so I've just put together some almost perfect looking shapes made of kinetic sand. Oh. Listen to the sound. Okay, pizza cutter is... Uh. Do you see how the sand almost has like a fluffy texture to it? Okay, let's do something very strange here. That was not what I expected at all. It's like a really nice cake. Does anyone want a corn cookie? Bit of a dilemma for this last pile. Do we grate it or do we put it through a garlic press? All right, screw it. Let's do both. Oh, kind of looks like some very gone off mozzarella. Let's just shove it in the garlic press, see what happens. This is what my training has leaded to. Oh God, it just looks like droppings. We've had our fun. Ah, the hand towel tablets. I really like this bag. Kind of looks alarmingly like a bag of mints. I've got some nice warm water. Oh my god, it literally looks like a mint. This has a high probability of being incredibly underwhelming. Well, let's try it. Three, two, one. Oh wow, that was so fast. That did not disappoint, I enjoyed that. The fact that they've managed to get a towel that large into a tablet that size, that's actually a feat of engineering. Whoops. <laughs> oh, that is insane. But let's ramp this up with the fidget toys. I genuinely think we spent over $100 on these spinners. Let's find out if it was worth it. Uh, this thing is tiny. I'm so excited about this one. Okay, this one is heavy duty. Very odd. I've got no idea how this one works. That is a cool design. Right, here's the pendulum. The way that this thing moves and catches light is actually mesmerizing. Yeah, I think I got it. Okay, so it's kind of just like a normal spinner, but a little bit more unpredictable. Six out of 10. Okay, Sonic time. Wait, what? He's too fast. I'm starting to see Sonic, kind of. He's still a blur. I kind of thought this was gonna be more like a flip book with the effect it creates. Ah, uh, I get that a vibe. Okay, this one can't be bad. Look how many mechanisms it's got. Ah. Oh. It's amazing. The pattern it creates continuously changes as the speed changes. Look how it catches the light. Easy eight. Don't really know what to do with you. Do you spin it? Huh. Oh, that is nice. It feels like an object you shouldn't be able to hold in your hands. And then when you start spinning it, it's a mess, but it always seems to find some sort of equilibrium. Unexpectedly fun. Seven out of, whoa. Okay, so this is what we paid, I want to say $50 for. It is very weighty and balanced. I'll give it that. Is something gonna happen when we spin it? Hmm. Okay, extremely smooth, but not $50, come on. Okay, well at the very least, apparently if you spin this one the other way around, come closer, you'll actually hear some music. Okay, moving on. Oh, actually bought you something. He bought me something. Oh no, oh no. I hate it. It's even worse in person. I don't want to touch it, that's so weird. Let's take it back. Okay, special pen time. Very shiny finish. And the really interesting thing about this pen is that when we click the button, ah, the entire structure of the pen changes. I've got no idea how they've managed to make it fold up so uniformly. But now we're stepping up, because at $40, this is the Vortex Shaker. Water and protein powder. This really doesn't look like it's gonna do much. But the company says that apparently the combination of the power of the motor inside of this base with the shape of this blade, which actually looks shockingly like a stick man doing a deadlift, <laughs> is enough to create a vortex on the inside. Let's try it and find out. Okay, wow! That I did not expect. You can see it's like a whirlpool. This is so much more pleasant than using a shaker. It's got like a gentle hum to it and nothing spills anywhere, it's so clean. Okay, let's try it. One thing about that is that is incredibly smooth. And that's apparently just the side effect of how this thing goes about mixing your drink. Man, if that's a $40 satisfying gadget, what's a $400 one gonna be like? Well, we're gonna find out soon enough. Because we're already at $100 with this maglev platform. So apparently this uses an electromagnet that's strong enough to not just levitate the platform, but also whatever I put on the platform. I actually have a very strange idea. What if we try and put a spinning fidget spinner on a spinning levitating platform? Okay, so I'm gonna spin the platform clockwise and then I'm gonna spin the fidget spinner counterclockwise. I think this will work. Huh, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Did you see that? A levitating piece of chicken. Okay, no, don't eat from there. I'll give it to you. There you go. 
Oh, and actually, on the topic of levitation, this machine can, this almost feels like science fiction, apparently levitate water. We all know how magnets work, but water? This is probably the gadget I have the least confidence in. Oh my god. He actually looks like he's traveling upwards. Had me for a second. This might not be coming across perfectly on camera, but it's quite an impressive sight. So obviously water can't actually be flowing upwards against gravity, but the way it looks like it works is individual drops of water are falling at a constant rate from here down to here. There's a really precise cone at the bottom that's stopping that water splashing. And then at the same time, there is a strobing light that's basically flashing on and off really, really quickly. And that makes it kind of like a, a really sneaky illusion where you're looking at one drop as it's falling, but then when the lights go off and then they come back on again, you're actually looking at a different drop that's above that drop without realizing it. So it looks like the drop has traveled upwards. Genuinely hypnotic. 8.5 out of 10. Okay, so you remember those fruit cutters from earlier, right? Well, this is basically the baller version of them. And now that we've put it all together, I can kind of see why. <laughs> so the way this works is you lift up the flap at the back and then you pull open the spring-loaded mechanism. And that's when you drop the poor vegetable in, such that when you let go of the spring-loaded mechanism, it will push the vegetable towards the blades at the end. This is actually so heartbreaking. There's like a little piece of pepper sticking its way through, knowing what's about to happen to it. I don't want to be the one to do it. Oh my gosh. Each slice is so precise and thin. I feel like I can see the cell walls in this. It's also surprisingly smooth. I just realized what we have to try. Kinetic sand. This could be a match made in heaven. We need to listen out for the sound. Oh my gosh. It's cutting off like a single layer of sand at a time. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. Speaking of sand, this might just be the most elaborate sand toy that I've ever laid eyes on. It's got a slightly cheap 3D printed in someone's garage kind of look to it, which for $200 is not the dream. Anyways, sand in, turn the machine on, and then the only thing left to do is to drop one of these ball bearings in there. I'm assuming there's meant to be a magnet on the inside here. Right, my bad, there's another switch. Drop this in, let's see what happens. Yes, look, <laughs> it's like a shark under the sand. It's kind of like what I imagine a pet rock would be like. Okay, we'll come back at the end and see what it's done. Okay, we've tested a lot of bleeding edge gadgets over the years. We've seen shoes that allow you to physically feel music. We've seen infinitely repeating dodecahedrons and working displays the thickness of a piece of paper. But this airless paint sprayer right here is up there with one of the most exciting of all for me. So let's just say you've moved into a new place, you left your garage door unlocked one night and you have some very friendly neighbors. <laughs> I realize how niche this scenario is. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I can basically fill this tank with clean white paint. Oh, even that's so satisfying. And then this base compartment can effectively suck out all the air and create a vacuum with that paint. Which means that when I spray from here, it should come out as smooth and as quiet as can be. This is a proper like industrial bit of kit. Oh. That works astonishingly well. Like it's almost gone back to just how the paper used to be. And it's so smooth coming out this hose. Shame about that gargling box though. It's such a smooth, even coat of paint. Seven out of 10. I cannot believe that an item like this actually exists and it actually got delivered to us. This robot can write for you. And I didn't realize I had to build it myself. Okay, that only took us about five hours, <laughs> but it's fully assembled now. So I'm just gonna hand it our weird crushed looking pen. And then we pull up something called the Inkscape software, which lets us design any image we want to. And then the robot can turn that image into a path that it needs to follow to make it. I know the perfect test for this. How perfect a circle can a robot draw? Go. Ha ah. That was far better than I thought it was gonna do. There's something very surreal about seeing that happen. It's the fact that, yes, you can just print things in perfect circles, but I have just seen this use a manual instrument and execute that in person. I don't see how we can get more satisfying than that. Give it a nine, just in case. All right, this feels like a challenge. I'm gonna pull up the same photo of my cat for both the robot and me to see. I'll see who can draw it better. Man versus machine, let's do this. This is so intimidating. Not to worry, I did art at school and I uh, didn't fail. Does not look like a cat. Although I'm slightly concerned it's one of those drawings that's gonna come together at the last minute and look incredible. Oh, I've just realized what it's doing. The whole drawing is upside down and that that 
is actually incredible. Maybe I can beat it on speed. The worst part of this is it's not just better than me, it's also faster. So that's what the Axie Draw robot did. Here's my cat. I only have one thing left to say here. It's a good day for humanity. <laughs> Oh, that's you. Yeah, right there. He's more interested in the DVD screensaver. $800. $800 is the price of this clock. It's not made of any spectacularly fancy materials. It doesn't tell the time any more accurately than a normal clock, but it does have one key differentiator. It tells the time with a levitating hand. This ball right here. So we mount it on the wall. I'm really enjoying this LED ring around it. And we basically set it so that right now it's counting minutes. So one whole round is 60 seconds. There's an accessory for this. So you line that up with that dot and apparently you just slide that in. Oh my God, wait, the magnet's moving. Okay, I was too ambitious. We need to do it horizontally. Oh my gosh, we got it. Let me just mount it. This is wild. I feel like I'm inside of a Harry Potter movie. It's even like rotating on the spot. Okay, so check this out. We can set the timer to one minute. Each second it moves along, you can even see the LED follow it around. And the cool thing about this is that you can set one round of this clock to mean anything you want it to mean. So it could count a week, it could count a month, it could count just towards a specific point in time in the future that you're looking forward to, which is a feature I love. $800 though. I know time is money, but this is something else. Getting to the very highest end gadgets now, this is the Meiku Formbox. And it's been talked about on the internet as the pinnacle, the literal climax for satisfaction seekers. The idea being that, let's say you've just designed a product of your own, then you can place that product inside of here and use this to create a mold of it to efficiently recreate it as many times as you want. I mean, the outcome is cool and all, but it's more the way that it goes about it that's the fun bit. So our mouse right here is effectively sitting on a vacuum that's going to suck out all the air. It's actually just a Henry the Hoover, but make do. And then on top of that is a plastic sheet that is now being heated from a filament above. And as soon as that gets to the right temperature, we're going to bring that plastic down. Wow! Oh my God. It's created a complete seal around that product. Imagine the day when we get to actually print the mice as well. How do we get the mouse out? I do actually need my mouse pack. Is this how I'm going to use it from now on? Well, the good news is that I can still move my mouse. The slightly less good news is that I can no longer press buttons or scroll wheels. But this is a video that just keeps giving. If you asked a random person on the street to design their ideal piece of technology, I imagine that a printer that can 3D print chocolate would be pretty high on the list. So it comes with these really strange chocolate cigar looking things in the box, which you basically shove up the nozzle at the bottom. And then we just browse the various different folders of things we could potentially print. And you can do chess pieces. I love chess. Let's print a rook. So it's moving both the nozzle and the tray underneath it to create the shape. Look how precise the square is. This is my kind of machine. And it's almost completely silent. And here, is our rook. Wow. So it looks like it's had some trouble with the base of it, but the rest of it is spot on. It's so precisely crafted. But this actually goes further because you can also add in your own SD card loaded with any 3D model you can find on the internet. And apparently it can print that too. So of course we're going to try a Pokemon. Hey, Bulbasaur. see if it can make a Bulbasaur. Oh, it's the inside of Bulbasaur. Didn't think I'd ever see that. And you can tell this time, right, the machine's even got the base right. I cannot wait to see this. One eternity later. Yeah, so basically we ran out of chocolate partway through printing that. So we have a headless Bulbasaur over here, albeit a very, very nice headless Bulbasaur. But then the cool part of this is that we've managed to print one Bulbasaur in many, many different sizes. It's like a very weird semi-headless family. I'll eat the biggest one. Mm. The texture is so fun. You can feel every single layer is built on the inside. That is something special. Mm. There you go. It's Bulbasaur for you. Now, speaking of moments of immense satisfaction, I had another one the other day. You might know that when I went to go see Mr. Beast earlier this year, he got me addicted to anime. He showed me a series called Death Note on Netflix, which I finished beginning to end in a month, and I'm currently looking for the next one to binge. Open to recommendations, by the way. Also, isn't it kind of insane how this has actually automatically spread out all the sand? The problem is you can't find half of these shows on the UK version of Netflix. So imagine the feeling when I realized that I could use the Surfshark VPN subscription that I already had and already used to encrypt my internet traffic and monitor my email address in real time for any data leaks to just swap my location to the United States to access the US version of Netflix, which did have those shows on it. But the crazy part of it is that this whole Surfshark package together is just $2.49 a month, which split between the seven people I share it with is 36 cents. So hit the link in the description and use the code BOSS and you'll get it not just for that $2.49 a month price, but also three extra months for free on top of that. Fully refundable.